Um, so I'm from Sion. So Sion was traditionally used to be called the Forest Research Institute, and um, you're probably thinking, what does forestry and trees and pine trees have to do with um, seaweed? That's exactly what EMT said to me. Why are you working on seaweed? We do trees. Um, but hopefully, as we go through, you'll see what, see the connection between the type of work that uh, we do at Sion and how it sort of interfaces with um, the seaweed industry. Um, I've come to find the word seaweed quite weird. Weed has a bad connotation of something useless that you don't want. It's more of a sea resource, I think, in my mind. But no, yeah. So this is I can't there. Yeah. Um, sorry. So um, this picture is um, just a sort of bring to the forefront the challenges we have about getting rid of carbon globally from the atmosphere. So we're talking fossil carbon. Not all carbon's bad, but carbon... Uh, oh, yep. But, um, but yeah, so the, but, but the CO2 which we're emitting from the petroleum industries, from oil refineries, are obviously causing us a few problems that um, C4 are going to help to mitigate. But um, I'll just remind people that it's not just energy, it's not just petrol, it's not just diesel, it's not what the oil industry is. The oil industry is a lot of other things. So I'll just um, highlight the other products at 6.3 gallons per barrel taken out. Now, if we got rid of that 6.3 gallons at the moment, none of us would have probably have any coloured clothing. This would have to go, the projector would have to go, the cabling on the projector would have to go. We would not have a modern society a at all. So we can vilify the petrochemical industry for changing climate, but there's this part of it which even if tomorrow, if I snap my fingers and we had hydrogen cars, electric cars, we had all of our energy all taken care of from sustainable places, we've still got this big chunk we're going to rely on the petrochemical industry for, but we don't have to. We need to migrate away from that. So on the right-hand side, there's just a list of all the things that sort of the petrochemical industry provide to us, which we need for our day-to-day -day lives. We just can't suddenly decide we don't want them. Now, we'll get into an interesting situation. So if we cross off sea energy, carb, carbon energy, so petrol, diesel, and those things, the petroleum industry can't just drag up that 6.3 gallons independent of all the other gallons. So we're still going to need massive oil refineries. We're still going to need those potential um, oil leaks we saw on the Mexican coast and all over the place. So we need to move away understanding it's not just the energy problem we have to solve when we're talking um, to go to a bioeconomy. It's also the materials and the products. So I say in the world to come, it'll look something like that. So we're still going to have all of the products on the right, but we're not going to have them from an unsustainable source, which is putting fossil carbon into an environment. Now, sure, if you get rid of the fossil carbon from energy, you've got that stuff getting directly turned into CO2. But as you've heard today, there are other routes by which materials get turned into CO2 other than combustion in your car engine. So um. My portfolio, so we run portfolios, you don't have to read all of that, by, by the way, um, has three areas. Um, the overarching goal is to look at high value applications of the current biomass resources we have, including seaweed. And the reason um, for high value, uh, Mike articulated in his graph, we can't go building massive plants yet. I mean, no one's going to invest that sort of money. So in some ways, we have to have smaller plants investing in high value products. But then as time goes on, that's going to become cool and normal. And we're going to get these larger and larger sort of um, biorefineries, which will deal with some of the commodity and larger scale. So the one in red is uh, where the work we're doing on seaweed comes under it. I was looking for a catch-all which wasn't going to cover trees, which I wouldn't have to get into conversations with the board about. So alternative sustainable biomass seemed to cover anything that wasn't a tree well enough. So um, this alternative sustainable biomass by refineries, so what we're using is Scion. We've got a lot of background in cellulose. So the pulp and paper industry has been deconstructing trees into pulp to form things like the, the paper we've got our little program printed on or the toilet paper you may have used today. Um, and that same cellulose exists in seaweed to some extent. It has some unique properties, which makes it very different from the cellulose you'll find in a tree. And they've all got a use in the world to come. Some of them will be really, really good for um, uh, high performance materials, lightweight in cars, uh, Claire's super yacht. Um, 
And the other type of materials can be used in making batteries from sustainable materials and also in medical applications. Um, large area wound like burn, burn victims can benefit from nanocellulose uh, before the, the faux skin goes over. Um, so um, in the world coming, we can't use the word waste. In fact, we should probably should cross it out of the dictionary. Everything is going to be a feedstock for another process and ultimately it is fair enough to say the end process might be a biofuel which we will then burn to recover energy but the idea of putting something in landfill is going to be quite archaic or should be archaic and rather outlawed so um many of the compounds that we find in trees we also find in plants and seaweeds because of their environment have some rather unique compounds and again they've been talked about today a lot of these antioxidants are um, quite potent. They have to put up with a different environment. A tree, a redwood, which might be, you know, 100 feet high or 30 meters high, has to deal with wind and stress and strength, whereas a, a macroalgae just has to stop exploding due to osmotic pressures. So the way the cell walls are constructed and therefore the way that the chemicals that make up the cell walls exist are very different and gives them some unique properties that we um, should be exploring. Um, so I do believe that the oceans and macroalgae is going to form an important part of the circular bioeconomy for New Zealand. It, it, it's, so you should be, you're at the cusp of an industry which is going to feed into a whole range of products, not just the ones that we are even thinking about now. And the reason for that is that if you take the top five petrochemical companies in the world, take away all the oil and the energy and everything they're making, they still make about 89 million litres a day of materials that go into the products that are in this room and, and we're wearing. So we're going to need to backfill that. So, if, so we, if we solve the energy problem, we still need to make sure we're in parallel solving our resource and materials problems. And um, ocean forests, as they're called, um, so I found this link, um, they'd, they've done this really nice graph to show that actually carbon is what we're after, carbon is what the oil industry get for us, and if we're not going to use that carbon, we need the carbon from somewhere, then this plot will show you that um, you know, the ocean seems a really good place to obtain the carbon we need to live the way we live now and hopefully improve the way we live. Ben, you can see that New Zealand has a real large green ring around it. So we're going to be quite a big player in the world that will come. And it also means we can stop uh, doing things like relying on palm oil, which is obviously, you know, really bad for the environment. So, um, yeah, really important that um, aquaculture and seaweed take front stage as much as possible. So what do we do in my protected portfolio? So what we're looking at is biorefineries. So biorefineries are an analog to a petroleum refinery. You have a, a mess comes in. So in the case of an oil refinery, it's that black gunge that you can't do anything with. And then it goes through a, a series of processes by which you isolate and you up, um, you change the molecules into things of value, things that you want from the things that, that, that you've got. So you're not accepting what nature gives you, you're going through a whole lot of smart processes and bringing up a whole lot of new molecules and uh, Richard Furno is an expert at such a things uh, with, with carbohydrates. So um, in my particular portfolio, I'm really just concerned with the top two bars. Then again, as Mike pointed out, that's really just because no one has the investment capability to really take on that whole volume value pyramid in one go, though arguably in time there will be these things called biorefineries and they will be reasonably large and they will take an input and separate them into all of those different uh, levels and be um, exporting. But my um, particular portfolio is mainly looking at cosmeceuticals, nutraceuticals, fine chemicals and pharmaceutical intermediates. Um, at the moment we're really concentrating on cosmeceuticals. Why? It's because we have some really good partners that we're working with uh, helping to direct the research. And um, But really this is just for us to prove a point and I guess um, the point we're proving is in this slide. So they, um, the hand in the top left and the middle bottom is the same hand, just, just so you're aware. Uh, um, so um, what we've been doing is as part of uh, the after effect of the wine meeting with Claire and Tane was to look at how we can uh, produce nanocellulose. So 
the core fundamental building block of a tree or the structural parts of a tree or a plant or a macroalgae is cellulose. Now these are made up of little nanocrystals, so they're sort of from seaweed, they're about 10 times, uh, uh, 15 times 10 to the negative nine meters small. So very, 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 very small. Um, and because of that, they have amazing properties and that can be absorption. They use infiltration uh, um, media for things like sucking up heavy metals. Um, they can be used in medical applications. They're completely biocompatible, so they can be used in, in the interior of a person during surgery. Um, there's some work we're kind of teeing up uh, with Otago University to look at, as I said, burn care in the, uh, in the initial phases of the burn care. And what we've done there is we've taken the waste stream, the waste stream that was destined for landfill effectively, and we've put that through a process. Now the process we've designed, and I think it's important as we move forward in the world of biorefineries from just a refinery, is that every stage you should consider what, what waste am I creating? How do I deal with that waste? Is there a more benign way of doing it? You know, uh, and um, so the green chemistry principles in some ways. So we um, took that on board. So everything that we've used bar one item you could buy from the supermarket to transform that waste seaweed product into the white looking gel stuff there, which is actually a nanocellulose hydrogel. Uh, um, now that hydrogel, if you've got about 0.8%, so we'll say 1%. If you put 1% in a little 100 mil beaker and fill it up with water, you can then turn the beaker upside down and the water doesn't fall out. So it can store an amazing amount of water. And, um, and then once it's dry though, the, the, the other applications come in are due to its nano aspect ratio. So now you've got a material which has the expansion coefficient of glass, i.e. it doesn't really, and it's got a tensile strength higher than steel. Um, and, and it's incredibly lightweight. So you can then put this into products to improve their performance by having lightweight and also something which is going to impart a, a, a lot of physical benefit properties to your material. Uh, one thing we don't have there, and it is the difference between uh, the nanocellulose you can get from a tree compared to seaweed is we've made a battery using nanocellulose. And um, if you use nanocellulose from a tree, it doesn't work. You sort of charge it, you discharge it, and it doesn't charge up again. If you use seaweed nanocellulose, just, just do its slight morphological differences, we can charge and discharge it as a battery 100 times and it lost under 1% sort of efficiency. So these materials are, um, uh, there's lots of uses for, for these things, and we're just going to find more and more as the time goes on. So you're all in the right space. <laughs> Thank you.